first. Chris Doidge takes a look at how the backbencher can be a figure of fun or fear. If you're Cameron, Clegg, Miliband or Farage, there's a threat more scary even than that of a bad opinion poll, because more dangerous than the public's opinion is the opinion of the men and women sat behind you, knife in hand. The backbencher. Does my right honourable friend agree with me that continued criminalisation of people whose only crime is being poor is completely untenable? The evasiveness of the government on this matter has not escaped the general public. Whether they're defying the party line so much no one can remember whether there ever was a line or their mouth is a human headline projector. What do I do with my money? Do I take it out of this rotten thieving bank? Backbench MPs can be unruly, disloyal Order! Order! I haven't finished! Order! and a 24-7 pain in the neck. With a power base in their constituency and some independently wealthy like Andrew Bridgen, many backbenchers feel they have little to lose. Many questions surround this project have been asked, but precious few have been answered. As we all know, the best seat on the school bus is the one at the back. You were grossly negligent or you were grossly incompetent. Maybe backbenchers have all the fun too. But wait, we're forgetting something very important. Egos. The former West Derbyshire MP Matthew Paris recalls telling his constituency association that he'd settle for being Home Secretary because Prime Minister would have sounded pretentious. In the end, maybe Minister for Transport, he thought, until he lowered his ambitions to just being on a select committee and going on junkets to the Humber Bridge or a bus garage in Toronto. Not surprisingly then, maybe, that young Mr Paris ended up in a much more important career, television. The crushing disappointment doled out by the slippery poll is a game of statistical inevitability. Almost every new MP secretly wants to live at number 10, have tea with the Queen and have a special branch codename like Princess. Most will be the bridesmaid and never the bride. But if you can stomach the smell of regret and unfulfilled potential, then the life of a backbencher isn't too bad. You're paid £67,000 a year, you get to tell the government what it's doing wrong, and the thoughts of select committees, panels of backbench MPs stuffed full of the mischievous and vengeful, are more in the news now than ever. You're not a big fan of Barclays, are you? <laughs> I'm a big fan of getting answers from you. If you can swap your desire for power for asking difficult questions and causing trouble, ow, shh, being a backbench MP can be very rewarding indeed. Four Chris Doidges there for the price of one, I think you could say. A few years ago, um, Andrew, people were saying that the, the backbencher was dead, that MPs just followed their leader. But I guess with Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, they, they had huge major majorities and they didn't have to listen. But now that this is a coalition, do backbenchers like yourself have more power because every vote counts? I think the 2010 intake were more independently minded. Also, it's a very large intake, so it really altered the, the sort of structure of the House where a small intake can sort of be absorbed into the status quo. I think that the 2010 intake was so large um, that it's made, made, made a real difference. I think the fact that we're in a coalition, and I think for Conservative backbenchers, to realise that uh, 57 Liberal Democrats had such power over the government, um, but it's not hard then to work out that if I can get 56 of my colleagues on the backbenchers of my party, we can have as much say over what the government policy is as the Liberal Democrats. Do you agree with that? Well, I mean, Do you have more power? I don't know about more power, but the role of an MP isn't to spend the time sucking up to some top politician and saying, give me a job. It's to represent the people who've put you there. I actually and agree to, with John and to on put, this. And, you know, for better or for worse, to put forward what you think best represents them. And if the government's doing something good, get more of it for your area and if they're doing something bad stop it in your well, area. Well we know John that you are always very happy to offer friendly advice to, to your own leader but if Labour do get into power does that outspoken persona that you have does that hold you back if it comes to getting a job in cabinet if you get into power? I'm not really interested in the in the greasy in the greasy poll what I'm interested Really? In, if Labour's in power perhaps, do I want to live in 10 Downing Street I could tell you no <laughs> I wouldn't dream of living in, in, in some kind of mansion house like that. If Labour's in power, I'll be there twisting arms to ensure that the very best 
comes to my area. So if there's more money for schools, I want it. If there's more money for the NHS, I want it. If there's more money for new roads, I want it. And I'll get more access if Labour's in power, so I'll get more of the results. And you don't care that it might damage your, your career? Well, by being outspoken and upsetting a few people along the way, I guess is what I'm getting at. If I don't upset people along the way, I'm not doing the job properly. Fair enough. I think that goes for all MPs. OK. Do you agree with that? I, I, I do. At the end of the day, common sense isn't always as common in the House of Commons as you'd <laughs> like it to be. And I think the, the backbench are there to bring some degree of sanity to it all. Um, well, well, whenever, whenever I, however, however I finish being an MP, I want to look back in Hansard and say, yeah, I don't take any of that back. Everything I said, I believe at the time it. and I meant yeah, it. Okay. Well, it give us some of the, the, the tricks of the trade then. How do you go about making an impact as a backbencher? Oh, you, you, you get a government minister and you say to them, in, in, indirectly, I'm going to make you a star and a hero or I'm going to make you look like an idiot. Just agree with me and get it right. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 MP, what backbenchers do have, uh, we have the power of the argument. And if that you make that argument well, and you can persuade colleagues, uh, not necessarily in your own party. Well, it's but always about the, putting your case over well, And then, well, then you it? get a chance to make that into the media. If you take the people with you, the power of the argument is very, very strong. And, Andrew, and how, Andrew's uh, always agreeing with me. It's, it's a shame he do not vote no, with me more not. often. He loves agreeing with me. I get <laughs> up and speak and he's up there nodding, thumbs up all <laughs> yeah. the time. That's, that's alliance across the chamber. What he needs to do is transfer that into votes. That might get some popularity for you then. Well, what effect has social media had for, for both of you? I mean, John, you, you take to Twitter quite a lot. Oh, yeah, you get plenty of abuse from people, normally from London, and you ignore them. Uh, I'm interested in what the good people further north think, what my constituents think. They tell me in no uncertain terms, and I take their life experiences and their advice back into Parliament. If it's a Labour Prime Minister, they'll be hearing from me what the people of Bassett Law think in no uncertain terms. Now, how much pressure do you come under to, to toe the party line, though? Because um, you must be under pressure oh, to yes, do that uh, from uh, what uh, we hear. On the government benches, obviously, the votes are, are predominantly whipped. But, I mean, at the end of the day, they're all free votes if you're so minded, aren't they? And at the end of the day, it's down to each member's conscience which way they vote on the issues. What I would say is to, to the listeners, or the viewers, is that when we're discussing politics in, a, in the local pub, it's all black and white. It is a little bit more shades of grey when you're down there and you've oh, got to take part oh, in Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, I so you don't the, agree with each other I at all, do you? I say to the whips, <laughs> he's in favour of privatising the NHS and cutting it, of course we don't, but I say to the whips, don't tell me how to vote. Your job is just to tell me what time it is. <laughs> OK, let's leave that one there. Thank you.